That's true. superheroes. You gotta love them. They save the world from near disaster, they bring peace to all of mankind, and they shock us with their cleverness. Superheroes are great. So we are going to spend the next couple of weeks looking at the superheroes in the seventh book of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and do you know what it is? Judges. The Book of Judges. And while the superheroes in the Book of Judges didn't wear capes and they couldn't fly, they were raised up by God to save the nation of Israel from near disaster. What were they doing that's so bad? Well, let me give you a little context for the book of Judges. It was written for the period between 1300 and 1000 BC. That is way before our time. That means before Christ. And the Israel, the nation of Israel, they, well, first of all, they just decided they were going to stop worshiping God. They were like, see ya. And then they started mingling with the nations around them. Now, the reason this was bad is because the nations around them had some seriously bad practices. And Israel began to pick up those practices. And let me tell you one of them because it was pretty shocking. So what Israel started doing, because the other nations were, is they started sacrificing their own children to idols. Pretty bad, yeah? So Israel needed someone to deliver them. They needed a superhero to put them back on the right path and to bring peace again to the nation. So the superheroes that God raised up, those were men and women who were called the judges. All right, and we are going to find out who these judges were. And we're going to find out some of their flaws. Because just like the nation of Israel was deeply, deeply flawed, so did our superheroes have flaws. Some of them were perceived flaws, and some of them were legit flaws. And we're going to find out, did their flaws intercept God's plan? In other words, were their flaws so big that God was not able to save Israel during their time? So, our first superhero, his name is Ehud. 
Ehud. Yes. Um, so his name was Ehud. I've never met an Ehud before. I don't know why his name died out because he was a pretty cool guy. But his name was Ehud. And he was a lot like Mr. Incredible. He was brave and strong and passionate. But he had a problem. He was judged by society because he was different. You see, in Mr. Incredibles, if you've seen in Incredibles, if you've seen the movie, Mr. Incredible was judged by society because he was different. Well, Ehud was too. And let me share with you why. Because Ehud was left-handed. And that's why he was judged by society. Because being left-handed during that time was not okay. Now, is there anything wrong with being left-handed? No, not in today's culture, but there was a problem with it back then. And if you are left-handed, you were lesser than everyone else. So let me read you the introduction of Ehud in Judges 3. It says, The children of Israel cried out to God, and God raised up a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Jera the Benjamite, a left-handed man. Did you hear that introduction? It wasn't Ehud, the fierce and the brave one. No, Ehud, the left-handed man. That's like saying, your next hero, Sarah, a bit of a dork. Like, it's not that flattering of an introduction. So we're going to find out if Ehud's left-handedness, which was a perceived flaw by society, held him back from being able to save the nation of Israel. All right, so at this time, Israel was slaves. They were slaves under King Eglon. King Eglon. They were slaves under his kingship. And God raised up Ehud. And so what Ehud did is he went to the king with a message. But to get to the king, you had to get by the guards first. So they would do, you know, a security check and pat you down. And he went up to them and they patted him down. Okay, let me just give you a visual here. So you have Ehud. If you're right-handed, you are going to grab a sword from your left side. But since Ehud was left-handed, he would grab his sword from the right side. So he had a knife hidden on his right side because he was left-handed. And when the guards checked him and patted him down, they only checked his right side because most people were right-handed, right? So he got past the guards. And then he came in and spoke to the king and said he had a message from God. So the king sent all of his people away so that he could hear this message from God. And once everyone had left the room, Ehud took the knife, <laughs> and this is a bit gruesome, but he took the knife and he stabbed the king. And it sounds like the king was a very fat man because it says the knife went into his gut and the fat rolls rolled over the knife. <laughs> Pretty epic. What did I tell you about not G-rated? So... Ehud killed the king, and Israel was delivered from their oppressors. And it says after that that Israel had peace for 80 years. Ehud was a real, live superhero. So despite his left-handed flaw, God saved the nation of Israel through him. You know, what if Ehud had said, 
you know, God came to him and said, I want you to be the deliverer, the superhero. And Ehud said, oh, I have, I have this thing. I'm left-handed and I just, I don't have enough to bring to the table. I think you should pick someone else. What if he had said that? But he didn't see that flaw as something that disqualified him. And I want to ask you today, do you think you have enough to bring to the table? Maybe you're like this. So I was invited to eat a meal at the Lord's table and look what he gave me to bring. A straw. I love straws. So I'm pretty excited to go uh, over here to the, oh yeah, here's my, here's my place. My straw that I brought. And uh, let's see who's next to me. Oh, JoJo's next to me. Wow, she's got a lot to bring to the table. And, um, oh, wow, Reuben Bauman. Oh, he, he has a lot to bring to the table. Huh. Stop evaluating if you're good enough. Stop evaluating if you have enough to bring to the table. God designed you a certain way for a certain reason. And he has in mind what fits with you. So bring what you have to the table and watch how God impacts the world around you through you. Let's pray together. Lord, I ask that each one of us would be able to see what you've given us as enough. That who we are and what we have to bring to the table is enough. And I pray, Lord, that we would be able to um, fulfill what you've called us to and that we would impact the world around us in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, that's it for today. So I will see you, well, I'll see you tonight if you come to Zoom, and I'll see you next week. All right, bye, guys.